than they often do from, from adults and teachers. So I think there are some really great uh, elements to this project, and um, I really hope that it does get rolled out and that, that you know, see what else we can do to support you in this great, great project. Thanks. I don't think there's a question at all. <laughs> no, sorry, there's a question. Yeah, I've just been taking Jeanette, and yeah. then Wendy, and then you will. Do you want to make a comment? Yeah, I just want to say thank you for that comment, um, Mickey Chair. Just to point out that actually, also key to this is the leadership. It's the heads of the school who's really driven forward these projects. And what we have to bear in mind is not all schools will be in the same position as these two schools are. So it's taken a lot of effort from the leadership to ensure that they have the team around them to be able to offer these very different models that almost kind of go against the grain of standard school delivery. Um, so it's been a key leadership, key teams, and also making sure that those involved in the teams are part of the community. So you're right, for actually for some of those communities, actually they want to stay, they want to stay living on the wood church estate because that's their family, that's where they want. Actually, why should they move off? So it's around looking at the assets within those communities and drawing them into these projects. So yeah, it's definitely from, from the community. Yes, thank you. I'll keep it brief, Chair. Um, Tony actually asked a really valid question, which I was also about to ask, so I was going to ask it again. Thank you. It's just to say, add to what Chris just said, uh, you know, this is fantastic what you're doing there. I can't believe that we're sitting here in 2015 in one of the richest countries in the world, in the advanced capitalist country, and we are discussing child poverty and deprivation levels at, at this level. We should really hang our heads in shame as a society about this. So I just want to really give credit where uh, credit is due. You're doing a fantastic job, and I just, I'd like to think something big is going on the horizon and changes people's lives, but it's not. So what you're doing, working from the roots there, it's Uh, yes, well, having been part of the child poverty working group and seeing at first hand how these, these schools have got going and the support and the encouragement that Becky has given them and the resources gone into that, it is really exciting. And I think it's exciting as much as anything because although they're based in a school, this is about community. It's not a statutory function, it's kind of voluntary. Is kind of looking towards, they're looking towards being charities perhaps. And they're providing engagement, they're providing education, they're inspiring people into employment. And uh, Becky, would you just say a little bit about the fact of the way that they die differently and that although they're getting the same outcomes, they've got very different models? Yeah. So, so the two corps have very different um, leaders, very, you probably probably say they're chalk and cheese in the way that they are. They're both very aspiring ladies and very inspirational, but actually um, Lisa have come out with a very strategic partnership based approach to begin with, so they've started very broadly, whereas Woodchurch have started with the school and grown out. And actually if you look at the report, the footfall through has is, is, is become pretty much the same. What's happened, what's very interesting with both the hubs is that where it was predominantly the school children, the school parents <coughs> who first access it now, it's the whole of the community. So it's looking at parents from the other schools on the on the estates as well as <coughs> community members. So one one hub started very broad, like a full-on approach, and the other the other um, hub started very narrow and broadened out. May I ask you a question? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Chair. Sorry, Hopefully, just a, just a quick question. The uh, founder and Lisa uh, were awarded £50,000 to set up and develop. It, it, presumably, there is an ongoing cost involved. Um, is that in, uh, in the permanent revenue budget for the council? Um, and also, uh, I'm assuming, well, I'm not assuming, I know, but the constituency, they will fund it out of money that are given to the constituency. So, uh, have we got a bit of a mismatch there? Have we, have we got a policy on exactly how these uh, hubs are to be funded? Because I think the you know, general consensus that, they, that they're doing the matter. I think in the first instance, we just wanted to look at ways of generating this kind of activity. So um, we initially had £100,000. Uh, we were going to award that, or through the council, to one school. We 
We'll have four schools that applied, two were excellent, and hence the money was split, and off we went. Um, in terms of ongoing revenue costs, um, both um, Liso and Fender, or Holy Spirit and Fender, um, have, are going to get an extra £25,000 uh, from the 1st of April. And that was agreed uh, by Cabinet just after Christmas from the Public Health Outcomes Committee. Um, you're right, in terms of the Birkenhead constituency, that is money that flows through the constituency committee. But we've now got such rich information about how this works and evidence that we are actually getting to children and families much quicker and making a difference that this is something we need to plan strategically how we roll this out to more schools. We do know that schools um, don't, aren't have, having necessarily more than that they've got flat cash in terms of uh, school funding, but they have been getting, or they are now getting additional funding through pupil premium. We are also on the brink of starting our new traded services, Cheshire, Western, Chester and Wirral, and any surplus that's made through the trading service, uh, it's up to the government's arrangements for the trading service to develop a, a framework for how outcomes for children will be improved um, through teachers having input, senior members, artists, collective members having input into that children's framework. This might be a proposal that we want to look at how to explore through the school trading services. So the surplus is flowing back to support schools, more schools to develop this kind of initiative. They're, they're just some ideas that we're exploring at the moment, but clearly this is something really exciting that the community, you're quite right, it's embedded in the community, it is bubbling up for the community, and certainly the Holy Spirit and Federal, <coughs> the key to making it work alongside very, very charismatic parents with lots of energy who take their staff team with them is having a really good community connector. So someone from the community who gets what makes the community tick and who can uh, work with partnerships, work with local people to say it's good to do this and all sorts of exciting things and, and, and take it moving forward. So that's where we are with money, see core money, but they've attracted other money. Um, because it's schools that are developing this and have attracted quite a bit of charitable money, faith money. It's a bit like the um, power of the talents almost. We've given the money out and they're making that grow and develop. So this next year is 25,000. This is, is tempered just to keep it going and then looking at how we develop this and implement this in partnership with other agencies and school community. Just a very quick point, Chair. Um, point, point five on page 92. Um, can I have a clarify? Is the, the same price as charged by all five and eight pounds per day? Is that per child attending the holiday program? You're asking a question about detail of the least ever project. Page 91. Page 91. Point five. Yeah. That's more detail than Becky Davidson. Chancellor, it's a report about.
that I, my board is concerned and more needs, so I feel that more needs, which is equally as required as Lisa, isn't getting any of this benefit whatsoever. Um, so, you know, so it's a review of the report and um, well, yeah, it's it's actually, I was going to say, my, my point at the end is going to be how can this committee uh, monitor the effectiveness of the child poverty strategy? There's been a lot of concentration on the two community hub projects, which I know are very important parts of this project, but they're not the only parts. And I think the whole point of this committee is to scrutinise performance. And I'm wondering how we can actually scrutinise performance of the child poverty. Chair, yeah, I didn't go into any detail, but the future actions listed in the 2-6 uh, set out how we need to refresh the strategy, refresh the membership of the group. Um, and earlier we talked about um, the, the data set being produced for what is involved in. So from the 1st of April, we recognise that we do report on school readiness, for example. Um, Tackling child and young people with low health impacts and closing the attainment of businesses in schools. There are other areas we're working on that currently don't have performance in the places. We will have them in the first of April, so we'll be able to report more on the overall strategy for any other And I don't know if now is the most appropriate time to make a comment because I know that I was talking to um, the peer review group on, on public health and its relationship with, with this committee and the health and wellbeing board. Um, sorry, not, not the health and wellbeing board in its relationship with this committee. Um, but we haven't as yet uh, established a um, connection between the two. And though we can monitor the different component parts of the work that's being done by the health and wellbeing board in order to improve the health across the world, we don't actually get to look at the agenda and we don't get uh, um, we don't get their strategy, you know, to be in its entirety. I know we've got a meeting next on Wednesday, when we're going to start to look at that. But this is an example, really, of how it's very nice to get a report like this and to see all the good things that are being done. Um, but actually, we need to plot it, don't we? Um, and that's where um, we'll be able to do that. We'll be producing a data set, and that's, that's good. Thank you. Okay. So the, this, this report is for, for noting. Are we happy to do that? Yes. Okay. And then we're on to, uh, we're on to performance management. Mm -hmm. uh, there are, we may as well take the exceptions, I think, rather than go to the public report. We're happy to look at the exceptions for those that are on the performance management. But Elizabeth um, and Gary, we're going to talk about um, NHS health checks, and are you going to talk about some of the questions as well? Okay. Okay. Um, the, 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 increase on quarter two. I know colleagues have been working very hard to get the health check uptake to increase. So, and they were optimistic that that's going to happen. So the quarter three brings, uh, actually brings that, brings that back. Um, and there's some confidence that that will continue as quarter four. So we're in an amber uh, classification now. And they're reasonably optimistic that that can possibly get to three for quarter four. So that work seems to be bearing fruit for the, for the object. Um, so next one, the smoking cessation. Uh, this is a, this is an ongoing um, concern, and I know the provider we're looking at. Yeah, we've also looked into it as well. It does seem to be performance against this target is down around the country. Uh, and one of the factors that is widely believed to be responsible is uh, e-cigarettes. Um, we've asked the provider, although there's good reason to think that is the case, we've asked the provider to go away and give us some hard evidence how that's impacting on what's happening. We've actually been out and spoken to some e-cig sellers ourselves uh, I've got some surprising um, information back from them. Uh, and it seems that they are actually providing something like a, 
uh, a smoking cessation service in their own way, and talking about clinics and advising people on the best way to stop their tobacco smoking and then transfer over to e -cig. So that's something we have to look into uh, in more detail. But we are, to pick this up further, we're planning to set a session with the provider in late, either late, late this month or beginning of March to look in really close detail at the whole uh, smoking cessation approach and actually think, examine whether in the light of the change that e-cigarettes brings, are the services that we now provide fit for purpose? Is this what's needed currently? And look at whether we need to have some sort of radical review of how we provide a smoking cessation service. So it's resisting <coughs> all efforts to push that number back up again. So that's the point we've got to now. Um, thanks for that. Um, one of the questions I asked, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'll have to wait till you can tell you your Well, one of the questions again. I asked, was this consistently not, not performing to charge? Yes. For as long as I can remember. And the same is the case with, with um, uh, a portion of opiate users. Yes. And I remember asking that question at the time um, what do you do when um, a traffic is consistently missed? And I do remember Julie also answering the question. We um, looked to, look to the provider. Assuming that you could be doing that in this instance. Yes, we're going to meet with the Community Trust. Uh, we set a date last week, I can't remember if it was, but I think it was later this month to review that. And one option is that services uh, have to recommission. Um, as we've done with the opiate service, it's the first day of the new opiate service, uh, substance misuse service, rather, the opiate service. It's yes. the first day of that service to date. Um, so it has to be examined. But to support the provider, this, this drop in numbers, we've looked at the numbers and about five years ago and um, we were looking at hugely higher numbers of people accessing the service and it's declined steadily over the last two or three years and um, it does coincide with the arrival on the scene of the e-cigarettes and, and the feedback that we've got from Becky going out and talking to the people selling these cigarettes is that they are seeing themselves as a service, as an alternative service to you know, people to stop, stop smoking. I'm sure that's not all that they're doing, but that's part of what they what they're doing. The speaker said that it wasn't the introduction of people smoking, but take a point of measure. Yeah. And then, Patrick, do you want to say something? Well, just to add to it, Chair, if I may, then, so as one of the providers, perhaps the key provider, then, you did ask um, me via Fiona a couple of months ago to add to this. And I stick with the same position that, that I agree absolutely with that, that people are not taking up these kind of services in the same way. The footfall through these kind of smoking cessation services is just dropping off. And I don't think it's a whether there's a different way. I genuinely think there, there has to be a different way of thinking about this. Um, we're receptive to that. We will stand up to any kind of challenge or test. But I think we are, I guess, at the end of our kind of knowledge about what to do to keep people through. <coughs> two things I'd say, I think, as I said, whenever it was two or three months ago, that the record, the number of percentage of the population smoking has fallen significantly in rural areas across the country. So that's the progress we should be monitoring and correct, congratulating ourselves on, I think. Um, but also our record of maintaining those people who come through our service to keep stop smoking is that expression, is very good. It's just that we can't get the same number of people to access our services. But we're happy to, we will all participate in that. Yeah. Thank you. Phil and Jeanette. Uh, thank you, Jeff. I'm not sure I can quite tell um, anyone. This has been consistently in my next target. How close are you to the camera in the comments? As you are with it. Maybe you just... Well, we go through with a, a review process first and a consultation. That, and the process of retendering, if that's the route we go down, takes, the process takes the time. So it wouldn't be something that we do. If it was something we did, it would probably be at the beginning of 2016 17. Okay, yeah. I mean, thank you for that. But this has been consistent on its targets since then, since I came on this committee, which was some time now. And I saw that you let it on a target from. 
I assume we won't hope that if we're going to look at it and have this commission. Well, there's still, there's still a, quite a lot of people that are stopping smoking, so I think they're getting benefit from that. It's just a smaller number. Um, so the likelihood is, I would think, that we still need a service that's delivering that to people, but not configured in the same way as it's configured now. There will still be a need for that at some point. But that's... It takes a bit of time to, to <coughs> analyse why the numbers are falling um, and understand that. So. I wasn't suggesting we stop the service. Yeah. I'm also be concerned by suggesting that the East of Rutland is doing the service for you. They're standing on the I wouldn't say that they're going to get the cash as well. I was very surprised to hear what was coming back when we were down and spoken to the couple. Um, uh, I'm sure there are lots of different motivations to do, but I think there, there, it also seems to be people seem to have found a bit of a niche in themselves and actually have used e six to cut down their own smoking and see it as both business opportunity but also they're, they're preaching what they've experienced themselves and offering that to, to others. And the harm reduction is something I'm sort of well, really really kind of they have health risks in themselves. It may be, you know, you know the people quitting smoking business for but that will still present a health risk at some point or another. Yes, I mean it's not something we're we're supporting at this point, but it's interesting to hear that people are seeing it in that way. That people, some of them, some of them. Jeanette and Ventrina, just put in all these after cash With regards to these targets, I I understand what. Phil said about the consistent volume. I'm just wondering whether they're not realistic, really, because like the opiates, but well, well, sorry, drug alcohol services contact, I imagine that there's a small core, well, maybe not so small, a core of hard and sort of addicts who have got no information, or just can't, and won't <coughs> give up. And I, I think that, I mean, we nationally set these targets. Are they nationally set? Right, I think, I think it's a big ask, and I think. But um, you know that you are working hard and you are offering a really good service to people who want to stop smoking. I just think that these, these targets perhaps might might be unrealistic given consistently not able to meet them. There's only so far you can take horses towards it, you know what I mean? You, you can't make them stop smoking, you can't make them stop smoking. I know we've mixed up in escorts there, but you know, I just wonder whether they're unrealistic. Okay, Trina. Yeah, mine's just a good one. As a social smoker myself, um, I think that, um, you know, like Jenna said, we probably are on a realistic target that we're trying to hit. Um, the e-cigarettes, I don't think you should, you know, go down that route unless there's been, you know, hard evidence to prove that, you know, they're not a health risk um, themselves. Uh, just be very wary of that. Um, that's it, I think. Just say, if I can make a point clearly, we're not looking to validate e-cigarettes as a means, but people are choosing that as their own option. Um, okay, so the, um, time is options. Um, yeah. Very briefly, there's a, there's a second report that I have, so we've got to 19 adoptions and 12 of them um, between uh, within 12 months of child and have a place of adoption decision. We, we are monitoring each child and we're monitoring each child and we're monitoring
it's going in the wrong direction. We was um, a child in performance to our big respect, and we are still the third out of the counties <coughs> that we uh, in the northwest. Um, so we're still, relatively speaking, are performing well. Um, we do have an urgent care board, um, which meets fortnightly, and there is a robust action plan that is closely monitored. Um, to just give you a quick play of some of the things that we're actually doing, um, one of the issues is around uh, home of choice and people delaying discharge because of the waiting home of choice. Uh, and we are doing some work on that in terms of managing that process and actually looking at uh, moving people out to a non acute bed um, whilst the wait. So we're doing some active work on that. Uh, Cheshire West uh, also is attributable for some of those delays, and we have just agreed from one day there'll be a full time social worker from Cheshire West working with the team to help those of the Cheshire people, so that will ease a little bit of the system. Um, and we've just completed a major uh, pathway redesign, so we are simplifying the, the, the access in and out of, of, of our car, and uh, that is about to be uh, briefed out. We'll be bringing that implementation plan and communication plan on Wednesday. Um, and then we are also investing in multidisciplinary teams, and we've got some pilots around IV antibiotics at home and early supported discharge, we've got additional therapy. So there's a whole range, those are just a snapshot, a whole range of actions that we are taking to really try and uh, reduce the delays on the front of the Any questions?